Ronnie, that was unbelievably quick, some blistering brake building. It looked like you were completely at your ease out there. Yeah, it was all right. You know, like I said, you know, Tepchai never performed to the level that we know he can, you know, so it made it a little bit easier for me. But I still had to pot the balls and still had to make the breaks, which is always pleasing. So, you know, I put, put quite a lot of practice in the last two weeks on proper match tables. And I found for the last two or three years, you know, going to tournaments, I've been at sea with the conditions. You know, obviously I've been doing a lot of exhibitions. I never actually had a practice facility to play at. Um, so, you know, I was really just winging a lot of it. So I thought this time, you know, rather than that, I've, I've been able to, to get myself a decent practice facility and, and play on proper match conditions. So your game sort of changes a lot. And I've noticed there's certain shots that I've had to, to, to adapt in, in many ways to cope with playing the right way on these tables again, you know. Well, it's funny you say that because I've been working a bit with Joe Perry up here and he said he's done a few frames with you and, mm. and said he thought, oh, yeah, he's, he's in the mood for this. He, he fancies it. Yeah, yeah. Just like I said, I'll give myself two weeks practice for this, you know, because, um, you know, you, you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, we could have got, like, two days before the event, it could have been called off. So there was no point, like, investing too much time in it. But I thought two weeks was enough, you know, and... Um, yeah, so, you know, I think the biggest key for me is just, like I said, just getting a good practice facility that replicates a little bit what, what, like what we're playing in matches. It doesn't mean you're going to play well, but at least it gives you half a chance, you know. But so much nicer for you coming here without people, in a literal sense, in your face, trying to take mm. photos. Yeah, I remember you've said to me in the past, people have tried to take photos of you whilst you're eating or autographs. Mm. Can I have tickets? All of, all of that peripheral stuff has, has gone away, which must be so refreshing on a personal level let alone on a playing level yeah no obviously it's a lot lot easier for me just to go around and just relax and do whatever i need to do um but like i said you know and it's not it's to be honest with you it's not every other tournament's okay it's just sheffield is really like super intense so you know and, and that's why i didn't play in the masters because i just didn't want to deal with all the press the hassle you know the extra stuff that's required from you which isn't required of you from you from 90 percent of all the other tournaments so at this stage of my career it was more if i'm to play longer which is what i'd rather play longer and win less than win lots and play for a short period of time because i'd be bored otherwise so i pick out the events that actually i feel like i can enjoy you know and and this was one event i never really enjoyed the masters is another event i really don't enjoy so i missed the masters this year i, I was kind of I say blackmailed into playing into this event. You know, my, my sponsors and my ambassadors were like, you know, like we really want you to uh, play in the World Championships. So I was like, okay. So this was kind of done for them, more of a team effort, really, if anything. And I and my plan was just to come in on the day I was playing. This was before COVID nineteen. Was to come in on the day I was playing, and if I had any more than twenty four hours off, I was on the train home. It's only two hours on the train. It's quite a nice journey, and I thought I'd just get in and out as much as I can because. I just couldn't deal with it, to be honest with you. I didn't, never enjoyed my time here. It was just too too hectic. So I had to find a way that would suit me, if you know, or make it palatable. Um, so that was my plan. But obviously now this is coming. It's like very, very quiet here. But I'm still going to go home because, you know, I just it's, it's good to get home as well, you know. John Higgins made some interesting comments in the lead up to this championship. He felt that without the crowd, mm. that it could be, in quality terms, the greatest championship we've seen. And across the first three days, we'd already had 23 centuries. Would, mm. would you agree with John's assessment that we could see some unbelievably special snooker over this next 13 and a half days or however long we've got left? Yeah, I th yeah, I think so. Yeah, it p could possibly be the case. You know, like it's probably as near you'll get to a practice session of, of, of two really good players, you know, and I suppose without the crowd day, the tension's not there. But I think obviously it's, 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 it's there's a, there's, you want that atmosphere as well, you know, just to make it. I mean, because it is going to be a bit of a, a weird one for the person who actually wins it, and there's like no crowd to. Well, maybe they might have a crowd for the final. I don't know. They talked about it, but you know, just to to not celebrate in front of anybody, it's, it'd be a strange sort of experience, especially for the world championships. And just finally, Ding next. You've had some fantastic battles. I think you've been playing each other for about fifteen years. Great respect between the two of you. It's going to be a really intriguing match. Yeah, it'd be a really, really good game. So um, hopefully if we both turn up and play well, he looked good in his first match. I looked pretty pretty decent in that match. So if we can both bring that form to to to, to, to our match on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, then um, yeah, it should be a good, I was going to say, good, good good game for the fans, but good, <laughs> good game for the people watching on TV. For the viewers, yeah. <laughs> for the viewers, yeah. Betfred.
proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship.